Hello and welcome back at long last to another Rant Rave Review. I am Rose Corcoran, this is Tabitha the Black Cat, and I've been gone for like eight months but there was a valid reason. If you watched my last video eight months ago, you'll know that I got a new job and I, I moved and got a new house and yeah, moved from one town to another. So I've been a bit busy and I decided during that time to just not even try to record videos because life was insane. And then, and then, once I moved in and got settled, technology hated my guts. So like, I know the video quality is bad and I know the sound quality is bad, but honestly, at this point, YOLO, because I got a fancy microphone. Fancy microphone, like Fritz. It, it does this thing where if I, this is like a mini rant within a rant, this is a mini rant about technology, <laughs> it loops. And by loop, I do not mean sound looping or feedback looping, which is what Google seems to think I mean, it will do this thing where if I say I want to give grapes to a duck and then go ice skating, it'll say I want to give grapes to a duck, 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 for the entire video. Like it'll just choose a random syllable and just repeat it. The video's fine, the video's still moving, but the sound just repeats. And it's happened like every time. So I have to, I want to see if this is a computer or the microphone or what, but it's very strange. So I need to fix that. And then I tried editing a, a review of this book on Videopad and then the license expired and it wouldn't even let me export the stuff I had. And then it wouldn't even let me open Videopad the next time. I was like, great. So then I tried it on iMovie, which is free with my computer. And every time I tried to export the file like 10 times in a row, it just crashed my computer. So fun times. I don't care if this video looks bad or sounds bad. YOLO. I'm just gonna get it out there because <laughs> it's better that it exists in a sorry state than not at all. So, The Maid by Nita Prose. This book, this book, this is gonna be a rant. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint anybody who really likes this book or was looking forward to it, but he, okay, okay. So let me just... I think part of the problem is that this book was billed as, let's see, on Amazon has it as Number five in traditional detective mysteries. Number seven in cozy mysteries. And number 17 in domestic thrillers. I, uh, no, I, maybe if you, if you build it differently, it wouldn't be as disappointing. It'd still be heinous, but it wouldn't be as disappointing. But, we'll get to all that. So let's talk about the book. The book is basically, it's by Nita Prose, who apparently is an editor in Simon Schuster, Canada, Canada, as they say when they're not insane. Um, but she wrote a book and this is her debut and all these people are ranting and raving about it's an amazing debut. And I'm like, could have used a little more editing, but what do I know? Uh, not editing for like typos, but editing for like We'll get to it. Okay, so Molly the maid. She works at the Grand Regency Hotel. It's very clear that she's meant to be like on the spectrum, but it never comes right out. My cats are doing strange things. Never comes right out and says it. Um, and she likes being a maid, but ultimately she would like to be in hotel management. But, but, uh, her and her gran who raised her met with horrible misfortune? I don't know. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. Anyway, everybody at the hotel except for her manager thinks she's a weirdo. Except for the, like, tri love triangle thing of, like, the, like, sexy, like, doesn't care bartender that she has a crush on. Who's obviously evil. And the, like, good-hearted, like, immigrant boy she doesn't have a crush on who clearly has a crush on her who's obviously good and yeah <laughs> um and yeah anyway one day she finds a dead rich businessman in his hotel suite and she has to solve the murder mystery and or she becomes a suspect etc okay again let me let me just read you some of the uh let me see what does it say at the end of the book blurb it says well, according to the New York Times, 
author who Lisa Jewell calls it a murder mystery with tremendous heart. <sighs> murder mystery. Uh, oh my gosh, this is the part that makes me like my eyes pop out of my head. The actual back of the book says, at least according to Amazon, a clue-like locked room mystery and a, a heartwarming journey of spirit. Okay. Like, let's just get some things right out of the gate. It is not a locked room mystery in any stretch. Okay, if you don't know what a locked room mystery is, it's basically like, there's a room. It's locked. There's no way anyone could have gotten in or out. A dead body is in the room. No, There's no way anybody else could have gotten in or out. Who done it? That's a locked room mystery. The whole fun of a locked room mystery is you have to figure out the clever way in which the person got in or out, okay? At no point does that scenario come into the plot. Like, it's a hotel room. Anybody with a key could have gotten in or out. Multiple people, like, are working for this guy who could have gotten in and out. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not a lot of your mystery. And it's certainly not clue-like. Like, I think, okay. Okay, what's clue-like about this? Um, Molly Gray is the maid, and Mr. Black is, I think, the guy who got killed, and there's also, like, a Mr. Brown, and I'm like, maybe that's, like, an homage to Clue? But there's no, like, I mean, yeah, there's character types, because you have that in any, like, quote, cozy mystery, unquote, quote, quote, we'll get to that! Um, but yeah, it's not... It's not. And it's not, like, a classic detective mystery. I'm like, no, like, it's not even that. Like, no one's trying to really solve the murder. It, it's not, um, ah, uh, it's, like, it's not like that. It's not structured like a mystery. It doesn't perform like a mystery. The, like, twist at the end isn't, like, once, like, it makes sense. You're like, yeah, okay. But, like, it only makes sense because, like, an equal number of people could have done it. And there's nothing that is, like, oh, like, that's what happened. No, that doesn't happen at the end. Okay, let me give you the entire spoiler, spoiler, spoilers review of the maid. Okay, so what we know beforehand, well, what we learned through, I'll just give you the backstory, not in chronological order of the story, but like chronological order of the life of Molly, plus one twist, which is vile and makes it not a cozy mystery. Um, Molly and her gran live together. They're rather poor, but they were like saving up a nest egg. And then Molly dated this guy who, like, basically, like, found out her pin number and, like, stole their entire nest egg. Meanwhile, the grandma is, like, super sick, like, and, and she won't tell Molly what it, what she's sick with. And so Molly, because she doesn't want her grand to worry and wants her grand to focus on getting better, doesn't report the guy who stole all of their money to the police. Strike one. Okay, um, well that's actually strike two. Strike one is the pros, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Uh, no, so that's, like, it's so dumb. And, th and there's a whole theme of, like, <sighs> many people who have criticized this book, we're the vast minority, hate how naive Molly is. Like, because, like, yes, like, she is naive and she doesn't always understand everything. But, like, she's, like, rock stupid at certain points. And this is an example of her being rock stupid. Of, like, you know what? If you want to tell the police, don't tell my gran because she has to focus on getting better. Fine. But, like, you don't just not report that to the police. Like, I'm sorry. What? Like, no. Like, no one would do that. And if they did, I would lose all respect for them. Yeah. Turns out, eventually, now we know, Gran had, like, I think pancreatic cancer, some incurable cancer, okay? So she's dying. And then she dies, and then Molly is by herself, and she's still kind of in mourning, getting over it, and this is her Gran. And we'll tell you nonstop about all the very, like, Hallmark card wisdom that her Gran had. Like, and again, when people are like, this is heartwarming, and I'm like, I mean, it's a little trite, honestly? Like, and this is so many, okay. Look at me. I like teacups and little fawns and little foxes and cute things. This is like an homage to cute, cute old lady. Like, I should be an old lady, right? And I found this book trite. I was like, really? Okay. Like, it just, it just, it just, it 
wasn't anything. And just, and rather than just like, we, okay, the phrase, my gran used to say over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I'm like, you can actually phrase that differently. Like, or you can just put it in italics and we'll get that's what gran used to say because it happens over and over and over and over and over in the book. Which I listened to, I did not, this is how you listen to audiobooks, right? Um, which I listened to, I did not read with my own eyes, but my gosh. Let's get to that prose. As you know, if you've been listening to my channel, I'm not a fan of first person present tense. It doesn't sound realistic to me. Um, just because, I don't know, like your internal, okay, if it's first person past tense, it's like you're being told a story. And it sounds natural. Even if there's not an actual, like, you know, this person is telling X person a story, it's just the way that human beings tell stories. You're just like, yes, we have been, we, we got this. And theoretically, if you were, like, talking to someone, you might tell a story of what you did in present tense. Like, I say to this guy, and he says, you know, that makes sense. But first person present tense in a book, to me, it always feels more like it's supposed to be an internal monologue. And that's why it strikes me as so unrealistic. Because if you're, let's say you're a maid, like, you wouldn't be like, I fold down the bed sheets and walk over to the dresser where I pick up the old man's socks. Then I grab the vacuum and switch it on. It's like, no, like, that's not how people think. That's not what, like, you would be thinking of other things. You might be thinking, like, my grand did blah, 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 blah. But you wouldn't describe all your actions. And there's no way to describe all your actions and make it sound not really unnatural and grating. Okay, and that's just all first person present tense. I have never liked it. I'm sorry. This book was like the ch the, 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 the platonic form of first person present tense where I'm assuming to make her sound like a very caricatured version of somebody on the spectrum, half the time Molly does not use, does not use contractions when she should. Like, she'll sometimes use them, but sometimes she will just say something like this. She would not use contractions. And it's like, she wouldn't use contractions. Like, wouldn't, couldn't, can't, shan't, not, would not, could not. Like, why? It, it sounds so, like, nails on the chalkboard while biting down on tinfoil. And, and, and... Like, I can't understand how people don't think this is offensive. I'm like, I've worked with kids who, like, have autism and stuff. Like, they talk, like, regular, you know? You can, like, there's nothing about the way they talk that, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a thing. I don't know any mental condition that makes you talk like a robot. I have never heard that in my life. Um, yeah. Super weird. Super, like, off-putting. And the other thing is, like, she's supposed to sound a little highfalutin because Gran is like, English and old-fashioned. But again, Gran comes off as, like, a caricature of what an old-fashioned English person would sound like. The, the, the thing about this book is, like, the characters are so flat and one-dimensional. And again, like, there's some room for that in cozy mysteries and clue-like things. But the best cozy mysteries have, like, a flip on that or, like, a they play with it, and the characters are deeper than they seem. In fact, that's why Agatha Christie is so great, because so often you have these character types, and then you learn about them, and you're like, oh, like, there is something more going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's the pros. Big yikes. So anyway, modern day. So Molly's working at the hotel. She has this big Mondo crush on this bartender who's, like, sexy. And obviously doesn't actually, like, care about her. And I was hoping... Full disclosure, I was hoping that he would be, like, a scalawag, but, like, turn out to be a scalawag with a heart of gold. But no, because, like, you have to be super one-dimensional. And my kitty is being... Timothy! <laughs> Nothing. I think he's chasing a ball. Anyway! <laughs> hmm. If you hear a crash and me screaming and running, it's because he just made the window fall out of the frame. Anyway, um, hopefully that won't happen. And like I said, oh, another thing, I can't edit this video because I tried. I tried to use Video Path. I tried to use Adding Movie and I couldn't do it. And anyway, back to the book. So there's also, this, oh my gosh, there's also this 
I don't even know what his name is. Juan Manuel. Of course. Okay. His name is Juan Manuel. He works in the kitchens. Now, if you were to be the most stereotypical, like, racist person in the world, what would you assume about Juan Manuel? You'd assume, oh, he's an illegal immigrant. Rather than, like, you know, literally anybody else with the name Juan Manuel who's, like, Hispanic and just works in, you know, like an old... Nope! He's an illegal immigrant! Wouldn't you know it? Because that's not the most stereotypical thing ever. But, oh my gosh, he also, like, loves Molly and... Okay. <sighs> to a, like... To a, like... Okay, like, you know, you have you have, you have have the whole thing in, like, romance novels of, like, the guy who's, like, cookie cutter, like, boop, to fit the exact what a woman wants out of a man. Like, this is, like, to an absurd degree, where Molly does this thing when she gets home, where she, like, wipes the bottoms of her shoes and puts them in the closet. And I'm like, okay, that's a weird Molly cleaning thing. No! Juan Manuel, when he comes in, like, without even being told, like, wipes the bottom of his shoes and puts them in a closet. And I'm like... Is this some, like, Canadian cultural thing that Nita Prose assumes people know how to do? Like, I've never heard of anyone doing that. Like, do people do that? Am I just, in, am I a barbarian who doesn't know how to wipe shoes? Like, it's so weird! And I'm like, you don't have to make Mon Manuel, like, that, like, saintly. I mean, it was, like, it was bizarre. It was bizarre. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a little bit, like, I was just like, what is happening? Um, anyway, so... She also has a head maid who is, you know, her supervisor who, like, hates her guts and, like, goes in before she cleans to, like, steal her tips and never manages to clean all the rooms in her, like, you know, docket and often calls out sick. And I'm like, why is she the supervisor? What? Which also begs the question, what's up with this, like, Grand Regency Hotel, which is supposedly very highfalutin and very fancy? Which is, according to, like, the book, as far as I can tell, has, like, four maids. Because there's a part, there's a time where, like, the head maid calls out sick, and they're like, oh, and this is the day after Molly witnessed a man being dead. And, and he's like, oh, Molly, we have to have you come in. And I'm like, maybe hire more than four maids. Like, are there any other maids who aren't named? Why does Molly have to come in? Like, what is this hotel? Like, how does the hotel function with, like, one, like, Mexican cook, four maids, one, like, sexy bartender, and, like, a manager. Like, I don't understand. Like, it's, like, it's, like, faulty towers, but, like, really big. I don't even know. Like, yeah, I, uh, many things about this book just, like, didn't make sense. And this is why, this is what I say, like, it needed an editor. I'm just, like, it needed somebody to be, like, hey, Nita, maybe, like, throw in some other maids running around. Maybe say, like, multiple maids called in sick, and that's why Molly has to come. Or maybe don't even have that because it's stupid and the plot and doesn't need to be there. Yeah, I just... I just okay. Strike? Is that strike, strike three? We had the dumb nest egg stealing thing. We had the horrible, like, first-person present tense lack of contractions. And then we had, like, weird hotel, like, weirdness. Yeah. Poorly run hotel for as fancy as it is. So anyway, we also learned that, Ma that Molly has made friends with... I am blanking on her name. She's like the wife of, second wife. We'll just call her second wife because the, the rich dude had married a first wife who her and her daughter are trying to like take over his company. And then second wife is just like a trophy wife. And she's like really lonely and sad and just hangs out in the hotel. But she has like a good heart. And she like makes friends with Molly and actually like, treats Molly like a human being. And they just kind of hang out and it's nice. And honestly, I would have, it would have been, Kind of interesting if she was the murderer, but alas and alack. Um, I also was wondering if the manager could have been the murderer, because like, that'd be an interesting twist, but alas and alack. Anyway, <laughs> so, the murder. He, <sighs> okay, the murder, he is in bed. Molly, like, she like knocks on the door and, and I think she like sees him in bed and like feels his like pulse and it's, he's not, he's dead. And then she sees something in the corner, and she, like, faints, or something in the mirror, and she faints. And then we have, like, okay, blah, 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 blah. The cops come, and, oh, we also learn that Molly has been giving Manuel different key cards for empty rooms because he's an illegal immigrant, and he has nowhere to stay, and she can't tell anybody about it because, like, ICE will catch him, or whatever they have in Canada. And... 
we'll go into that whole subplot. It's the dumbest thing I've ever, ever, ever heard in my life. Okay, so police cop lady comes and she interviews Molly and Molly's acting like kind of shifty because, you know, well, she just is. And, and we're supposed to think that like, and she even says, she even says like, when she knocked on the door to make sure no one was in there, like, because like someone might have been in there and then she went in and like, and she, and she was right, like someone was in there. And apparently like we, the audience are supposed to believe that Molly meant the dead body, but I immediately was like, wait, was someone else in there? Which turns out is the twist at the end of the novel. Like, somebody else was in there, and Molly knows who killed the guy the whole time. But I was like, okay. Like, I no one would phrase it that way, and like, it was weird. Anyway. So, huh, so many dumb things happen. So basically, eventually, Molly gets, like, the blame for the murder. How? Let's go back a bit. Second wife shows up at Molly's apartment and asks Molly to go get a gun that she left in the, like, fan of the bathroom ceiling for rent protection. And Molly goes and gets the gun. Which is, like, it's a little suspicious, but also why would you need to get it out of there? Like, the guy wasn't shot, so having a gun wouldn't be suspicious. So if there was a gun up there, you'd just be like, oh yeah, that was my gun that I have. He wasn't shot. Having a gun doesn't make you seem guilty as a murderer because he wasn't shot. Oh, we also learned that the, that the man was asphyxiated. Asphyxiated. And that one of the pillows was missing. There's usually four pillows. There was only four pillows. One of the pillows is missing. What does that make you think, random person who isn't employed as a cop? Well, anyone with half a brain cell would be like, oh, he was smothered with a pillow. In fact, I submit that if you did an autopsy, you could probably also tell, like, there'd probably be, like, fibers on his, in his mouth and his throat. But anyway, okay. But no, 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 no. The police are like, oh, like, Molly's cleaning solution was on his throat. And she's like, well, I was feeling his pulse. And I'm like, cops, why does it matter if, his, if, her, cleaning, if her cleaning solution was on his throat? He wasn't strangled. Being asphyxiated does not equal strangled, and if you had an autopsy, you could t see if he was strangled or not. Like, basic. Editing. Basic. What? Who wrote this book? Like, that's- Oh, hold on. Cat. Cat. Do not do that. You'll fall out the window, my love. Okay. <laughs> like I said, cats. Okay, so. Then, the, the coupe de Gracie, <laughs> why do they think Molly might be in on this murder? Well, it turns out that Mr. Black is running a, quote, cartel, unquote, in the hotel. And he, sexy bartender is in on it. <gasps> and it tur and Molly, <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks like, okay. So one time Molly goes into this room and she sees Juan Manuel, like, and these two, like, big behemoth guys and sexy bartender and, like, they, like, have all these bags, like, you know, luggage bags with them. They're like, oh, like, she saw us, oh my gosh. And Manuel's like, get out of here, Molly. Like, no, leave her alone. And she says, oh, look at this mess. Like, who eats powdered donuts on the coffee table without a plate? And I'm like... There's this whole thing throughout the book about, like, are you, like, Molly always asks people, like, are you laughing, like, with me or at me? Because she doesn't like to be laughed at. And a huge theme of the book is, like, don't laugh at people who are, like, neuroatypical. And yet the author either is hoping we laugh at Molly's, like, comedic incompetence at thinking that Coke is powdered donut powder, powdered sugar, or she's, like, trying to set up a dramatic scene, and I'm just like, this is laughable. Like, it is, like, what? Like, is this, like, and I'm like, it, but it's not funny, but it could be, like, if this was Faulty Towers, like, again, Faulty Towers could make that work somehow, but they wouldn't have rock stupid, like, it's powdered donuts, and I'm like, no one would think, like, like, what? Like, yeah. 
So anyway, in order, like, so, so, so sexy bartender is like, hey, Molly, like, clean this up. And he tells her that Juan Manuel is illegal and has to stay in different rooms every night with his two illegal behemoth friends. And if she, like, cleans up super well after them every time, then, like, he won't get caught and, like, deported. And she's like, oh, great. And, and this happens in this book. This best-selling book. And so that's, like, the third, like, nail in the coffin is, like, they, the cops find, they find the gun that she, like, tried to hide. And they find, like, co coke, cocaine, like, residue on her cleaning stuff. And I'm just like, which, which, even if you put all of that together, it still wouldn't make her a murderer. Because I'm like, she doesn't have motive. And, 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 like, you'd have, like, you know what I mean? Oh, also, all, well, well, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Okay, so it's all very rock stupid, and then, like, the doorman, who's secretly Molly's grandfather, because friggin' of course not, like, his, like, super smart lawyer daughter, like, represents Molly the maid, probably pro bono, I don't know, and, and, like, evil, sexy bartender, like, betrays her. Oh, he betrayed her to the cops. Oh, that's the other thing that she does, is she, rock stupid. She, so she's really hard up for money, and when the second wife and, and Black, Mr. Black, were, like, fighting, and he, like, he's the dead guy, he threw his, like, wedding ring at her, and Molly found it later, and, like, this is, like, two days after the dude is murdered, she, like, pawns it. And I'm like, maybe that could be motive, but it's also rock stupid. Like, and I swear she's in her maid uniform, like, when she pawns it. And I'm just like, and that's, like, the, the fourth nail in the coffin. Like, she killed this guy. And it's like, really? Did she? But she didn't strangle him because there's no strangulation marks in the autopsy. But they don't even talk about the autopsy because what are autopsies? What is cops? What are mysteries? Not this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they, like... And then it's like, friendship smash, which should be my favorite trope, but not in this story. We're like, Juan Manuel and like, nice lawyer lady and nice doorman who's secretly her great, you know, normal grandfather. And Molly, like, work together and they trap, um, that guy. Sexy bartender who, like, was selling drugs. Oh, that's the thing that, that makes, they say that they're, they're like, cutting drugs in the hotel. And I'm like, with what? Because doesn't cutting drugs mean, like, you're cutting it with something? And also, why would you do, why would, like, a businessman, who clearly has, like, tons of money to throw around, do his drug operation in a hotel, like, where anybody, like, any maid could clean the room, and, like, or, you know what I mean? And, and then the worst part, because, like, the, basically Molly's job is, like, clean up after the drug thing so that no substances is found afterwards, and when she's telling all this to the lawyers, they're like, Molly, like, you're a mule. And I'm like, need a prose. Need a prose. That's not what a drug mule is. A drug mule carries drugs. Like, you stuff, like, packets of cocaine into your body or, like, your intestines or your hair or your whatever, and you take it across the border. You move it from place to place, like a pack mule. You don't clean up. Like, a cleanup guy, I don't know what you call a cleanup guy, but not a mule. And I was like, Editor. Editor? Was there an editor? Was there an editor here to be like, yeah, this isn't what cutting drugs is and this isn't what a drug meal is. Also, you probably wouldn't, like, do a, a drug operation this way. Like, maybe if you were, like, a back alley type guy, but, like, a businessman, like, you could, like, what? It's just weird. I was just like, this is so unrealistic. And, like, not in a good way. Because I love me some, like, crazy, like, if this was, like, ramped up crazy kooky comedy, like, Faulty Towers, not to keep comparing it to, like, a better, a better, uh, hotel story I'd be down but it's not it's like a cozy mystery <sighs> anyway the detective eats crow and has to apologize oh wait did I I skipped a part I skipped the part where they catch evil drug lord yeah they, they they catch the the drug selling dude and and then like the detective lady has to like apologize and the most annoying thing was they're like, you judged Molly because she was different from other people. And like, and I'm like, no, she judged Molly because of, like, the dumb circumstantial evidence that the author had, like, concocted. And, yeah, it was just so weird. Um, yeah, it's one of those books where it's like, 
all the like bad people are mean to Molly and treat her badly and all the good people are Molly's friends and like that's it black and white which is hilarious because the whole theme of the book is like there's like shades of gray and you can it's totally fine to do evil the good that come of it and all this it's really messed up um but but and yet it has a super like black and white like if you like Molly and you're nice to her you're a good person and if you don't like her you're a bad person in the end uh yeah it's very dumb so anyway yeah Molly gets off and then we learn that Molly actually knew who the murderer was the whole time because when she saw the guy and she saw the thing in the mirror she looked and it was bum 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 first wife okay I feel nothing like yeah like she it was established that first wife was in the hotel that day but like again it could have been first wife she could have done it second wife could have done it Molly could have done it manager could have done it literally anyone could have done it like this is the opposite of a locked room mystery like a locked room mystery is like no one could have gotten in how how did they do it and who did it this is a like anyone could have gotten in and they smothered him with a pillow like it was like i was just like what like and, it, and again it, it wasn't like like oh like you pulled that out of left field it was literally like take your pick anybody could have been equally likely to do it and and when it was finally revealed i'm like okay and and you know the the wife explains that like you know he's a horrible person he was abusing his second wife and he was also like trying to cut his daughter out of the company and and they had a fight and she just like you know it just happened and she like smothered him and like sometimes like you do bad things for good reasons right and molly's like hmm. and i'm like i mean you could debate whether or not, like, killing a drug lord is, like, like, but it's so weird. I'm like, would she think that she's doing the wrong thing? Or would she think that she's doing the right thing? Like, what a weird way to phrase it. Like, maybe make your characters, like, it was very strange. Um, but then Molly, like, basically, like, lets her get out and cleans the room really well and, like, takes a pillow to laundering. And there's this one stupid part. Again, I just ha ugh, Maybe people should be required to, like, watch, like, true crime or something before they write a mystery because there's this part when the, when the wife is leaving... Where, like, you know, they're like, Daily see you? And she's like, oh, I'm just, like, a frumpy, like, middle-aged woman. Like, I'm basically invisible. Because that's the whole thing with maids. Like, they're basically invisible. And 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 she says this. I'm a frumpy middle-aged woman. I'm basically invisible. And I'm like, hi. Except that in, like, current year, if, if some rich businessman was murdered in a very fancy hotel, you know they'd have CCTV footage all over. And you know they would check when you came and left the hotel. And you wouldn't be invisible because these freaking cops who watch CCTV footage are, like, eagle-eyed. Like, so weird. And you have motive. Molly doesn't. Molly, even if she's a drug mule, quote-unquote, why would she kill her employer? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's so, like, they would have seen you on camera. Like, I know that the message is, like, oh, like, classism and sexism and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but, like... But, like, police forensics and things exist. You can't just ignore them for your message. <sighs> okay, now, that's all laughable and silly. But why do I especially hate this book? Why do I say it is not a cozy mystery? Because we find out that what actually happened with Gran... Oh, I should mention... I should mention that the... Oh, my gosh. When... Mon, blah, blah, blah. When, like, different people go to Molly's apartment, there's, like, it's very neat, and there's pictures of the English countryside, and it's very stereotypically, like, what a stereotypical British old lady would have, and there's a little, uh, pillow with the serenity prayer stitched into it, and all this stuff, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on to that thought. Turns out, when Gran finally told Molly that she had pancreatic cancer, she, like, made Molly promise to, like, kill her in the end. Molly, who depends on Gran for literally everything, will basically do anything Gran says. Like, also has, like, this, like, super strict, like, somewhat black and white, like, thing about, like, keeping your promises and hates people who, like, cheat. And who, like, I just, 
I don't feel like Molly can consent to that. Like, or at least not fully. Okay. So it's, she's almost like being coerced into like this. And in the scene when it happens, Molly's like, oh, like we don't have to do it right now. Like we go to the hospital. Like, mm-hmm. like she clearly doesn't want to do this. Like she clearly doesn't want to do this. And Graham like, well, you promised. And I'm like, you're like taking advantage of like someone who like has some kind of like mental thing going on. And then, and then the worst thing I've ever read, <laughs> Molly smothers her with the pillow with the serenity prayer on it. Well, that's like, <laughs> like, I'm like, why not just like strangle her with a rosary or like beat her to death men- with a menorah or like, what? Like, what? Why would you put this in your book? And why would people think it's heartwarming? And I'm like, maybe in Canada, that's considered like heart. MAID stands for medically assisted, what is it? Oh, medical assistance and death. It's a Canadian thing. I guess they put the maid and maid. Like, how is that heartwarming? It's so creepy. And I'm like, I would probably just like roll my eyes if it was just euthanasia. Like, I think it's, I mean, it's still like murder. I'm sorry. Like, it killed an innocent person. So like, I would roll my eyes at that. Like, of course, you're Canadian. Of course, you think this is heartwarming. But the fact that you did it with the serenity prayer pillow, I'm just like, that's like, so creepy. And so, like, twisted and warped. And, like, there's just something icky about it. I was just like, this is not heartwarming. Like, this is, like, icky and creepy. And you should feel bad for writing it. (laughs) Like, and I just, I just don't know. I was just like, how, like, before that, like, like, 80% of the book is just, like, laughable and kind of dumb. And then you get to that part and I'm just like, did I just, did I just read did I just hear what I, oh, oh no, <laughs> it was really messed up. So yeah, that's the me. <laughs> it's like, can't recommend it. Can't recommend it. Uh, yeah, I read it because, I mean, A, it's supposedly a cozy mystery, but it's neither cozy and barely a mystery, but also like my, my book group was like interested in it and I'd heard good things about it and I don't understand what everyone's smoking because it's not a very good book. Uh, I can't imagine anyone rereading it. Like it's not... Like I said, like, the, 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 like, like, heartwarming parts are, like, like, greeting card wisdom, and the, like, other parts are, like, smothering old women to death with pillows with prayers stitched onto them. Yeah. So, that's my triumphant return to Rand Rave Reviews. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it as well. Will I be posting this any frequency? Hopefully. Uh, as long as I don't have to edit. <laughs> I'm gonna try and figure out my whole camera microphone situation, but there's no promises because oh, I'll just now that we're done with the video, I can like bleh, I can dump out my so my job is complicated. It's fun, it's great actually, but it's um it's very, very, very complicated because not only do I do my main job, I also do marketing for the entire library. <laughs> so like youth services, our branch, our adult stuff, anything the city sends me to put on our, like, social media, all the flyers, all the posters, all the... Ah! So, so, um, we're gearing up for summer reading right now, and I'm a little bit overwhelmed, so, like, I may or may not, like, post another rant pretty soon. We'll see. I'm shooting for every two weeks, but no promises. So, yeah. Cool. See you next time. Bye-bye.